Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is your truly TJ Jones, and um, time for a little lunchtime Saints news. Uh, thank you all for checking out this video. Once again, I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for your love and your support. Um, I, I went live uh, maybe like a day before yesterday, and I talked a little bit about the New Orleans Saints. So just want to give you all some uh, up-to-date Saints news. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we found out that Key Kirkwood has been put on IR. Um, he's done for the rest of the season. Um, Key Kirkwood was supposed to play in a game against the Los Angeles Rams, but he ended up pulling his hamstring uh, during pregame warm-ups. So now we know that he is going to be put on IR. Uh, the Saints also re-signed JT Barrett. We know that JT Barrett has been with the New Orleans Saints for the past two years. Um, you know, he was cut by the Saints and he went up to uh, Seattle and uh, he was cut by Seattle and now he's with the New Orleans Saints. So the Saints added him on because, of course, we know Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the starter this Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks. Then Taysom Hill and JT Barrett is going to be a third string quarterback. So he is going to be on the practice squad for right now. Um, so uh, I think it was a good move. Uh, JT Barrett being a part of the New Orleans Saints organization went through uh, I say what about a training camp and a half with the New Orleans Saints so he's kind of familiar with the offense he knows uh, he knows what to do so I think that was a good move as far as Keith Kirkwood is concerned I think this was a crushing blow I think that Keith Kirkwood was going to be one of those guys that were going to be uh, pretty good this season um, Drew Brees kind of counted on him uh, throughout training camp the first part when Michael Thomas was out um, doing holdouts, trying to get that new contract. So the New Orleans Saints really were dependent on Key Kirkwood to deliver. Uh, Traquan Smith, he was also injured in a game, but it seems like to me he's more like day-to-day. -day. Uh, and you're probably going to see uh, two uh, practice squad members come up to the active roster. You're probably going to see somebody like Emmanuel Butler and a little Jordan Humphreys come up. So I'm interested to see some of these young guys stepping up because uh, we all know that uh, Teddy Bridgewater is going to need all the support he can get. Um, teams are going to start zeroing in on Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, kind of like what they did against the Los Angeles Rams. So the New Orleans Saints going to really have to step it up and um, really handle up on their business. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have uh, been talking about the quarterback situation. A lot of people have been talking about, you know, backup quarterbacks, who they need to get. People have been asking me about, you know, the news about Colin Kaepernick, the agent of Colin Kaepernick, uh, calling the New Orleans Saints and asking them uh, what are they looking for a quarterback. Uh, I think the Saints are good what they got right now. You know, I think I like JT Barrett. I like JT um, because he is familiar with the offense. And I think that that was a good move. Um, if you get anybody new in here that you probably don't really know, um, they got to get acclimated to the playbook. So I think the Saints just went to a guy that they know was in the meeting rooms that was around some of these other guys. So it wouldn't mess up the chemistry and the camaraderie in the quarterback room. So um, I'm interested to see how the, uh, how these couple of weeks are going to unfold. Um, I see some people uh, saying that the Saints, uh, you know, DOA dead on arrival, saying that we're not going to win another game, saying that the New Orleans Saints are probably going to uh, – be one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, I don't believe that. You know, I think that the New Orleans Saints were actually built uh, to weather this storm. Uh, I think the defense needs to step up because there are no more excuses. You know, I mean, there are no more safety nets. There, I mean, you got to go out there and you got to perform. Uh, Drew Brees has been bailing them out for years. Uh, I think it's time for the defense to really step it up. It's time for these guys up front to get pressure. It's time for these linebackers to be where they need to be, and it's time for the secondary to handle up on their business and no more blowing assignments. I think if you go out there and you play as a team and you rally around Teddy Bridgewater, you probably don't be scoring 30, 35 points a game like you once did, but you can muddy up the field by a good running game, uh, You know, making sure that the clock is constantly moving, and playing good defense. And that's how you're going to get past this. You're going up against a Seattle team that dealt with a couple of injuries in the game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they still have Russell Wilson, one of the most underrated quarterbacks uh, in the National Football League. This guy doesn't get enough credit for being a great quarterback. He doesn't get enough credit for being uh, as good as he is. I mean, he's a guy that can roll out of pocket. He can prolong plays. He can throw the ball downfield. And now he's on that level where he is one of those quarterbacks that can make 
the wide receivers around him much better. And then you have Carson and Rashad Penny um, as his running back. So the Saints are going to have to have a lunch pail mentality. I don't know if the forecast calls for rain, but if you're in Seattle, most likely it's going to rain, so you're going to have to run the football. That would kind of make me a little bit nervous about this game with Teddy Bridgewater uh, because everybody knows that Teddy Bridgewater plays with two gloves on, and uh, playing with a glove on, you know, in the rain might affect, you know, the way that you throw the football. So the Saints are going to have to run the ball. You know, I, I know Seattle – it's probably going to rain. I'm j I'm just saying from a from a forecast standpoint, they might want to get ready to to uh, run the football. I mean, last week uh, the Los Angeles Rams loaded the box because they didn't believe in Teddy Bridgewater throwing the ball throwing the ball downfield. I think that uh, Sean Payton is going to come up with a game plan. I think you're going to see a combination of Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill in this game. I think they're both going to take first team snaps. I think Bridgewater is going to take the majority of the snaps, but I think you're going to see Taysom Hill in some packages as well. I think the Saints need to use Taysom Hill in this game. I feel like he can be one of those uh, players that's like a secret weapon because you never know what Taysom Hill is going to do. You never know if he's going to throw the ball downfield, he's going to take it and run, or pass the ball off to Alvin Kamara. So I think you need to use him a little bit more in this game. I think you need to run the football with Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray and try to just milk the clock. And everybody knows on the road you got to start fast. I mean, you can't start slow. You can't go out here, you know, making all these mistakes with these holding calls and stuff like that. You got to go out here and you got to start fast. You got to make sure that these first 15 plays that you script are some of the plays that are going to set the tone for this game. I think if the Saints do that, I think they're going to be just fine. So I'm going to leave uh, you all to any questions that you have right now. Um, I'm going to read them and see, you know, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, for a few minutes so uh, Zane says thank you brother for updating us I've been working a lot so hard to keep up yeah me too man but to be quite honest with you uh, you know now I'm trying to give you all more Saints news I'm trying to do more podcasts and right now I'm in the process of uh, uh, trying to take calls on my uh, YouTube live show so be on the lookout for that. You you all will be able to call in on Skype um, and use you know a Skype number where you got guys can kind of talk and uh, vent, give your frustrations and vent you know about the New Orleans Saints team or celebrate about it when the Saints get wins. So I'm I'm really working on that. So thank you very much, Zane. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, Abel says I think our quarterback and offense is fine, but Russell Wilson loves to throw deep. And he almost always connects. I'm just worried. Um, yeah, um, you say I'm more worried about our secondary. Abel, thank you very much. I'm always worried about our secondary, Abel, because they always give up big plays. And I said it on the last podcast, when, when quarterbacks throw the ball downfield, it's like you hold your breath because you know how the camera goes. You know, they show the quarterback and then they show the ball going downfield. And, and you know, you like, <gasps> and all of a sudden when they break up a pass, you like, oh. Oh, man, you know, I can't believe it. And then when they somebody do a big play, then you're like, oh, man, look, I knew it. So you, I think the jury is out. I mean, <laughs> if I was the offensive coordinator of the uh, Seattle Seahawks, trust and believe, I'd be trying to throw the ball downfield too because the, now people realize that the Saints' uh, secondary players are a liability, and they got to be able to answer the call. I mean, they are going to throw the ball downfield. That is what That is what they're going to do. I remember, uh, I think it was last year, um, I think when the Saints, uh, no, nah, maybe it was like year before last, I think the Saints played uh, the Minnesota Vikings, and that was like the first game of the season, and then it got blew out. I think the next week, um, they played against a team, and the team just basically just threw the ball down the field. I can't remember if it was Tampa or Carolina, one of them. But it was like very uncharacteristic of the team they were playing against because the quarterback was more of a nickel and dime type guy. And they were just throwing the ball downfield on the Saints because they just knew, like, man, it was rather two things going to happen. It's rather going to be a big play or it's going to be pass interference. So the Saints going to have to clean that up because right now um, they're looking like a team that just can't cover downfield. Uh what you think about our secondary against Seattle? Uh, Zane, I basically uh, just answered that. You and Abel were on the same page with that. Um, I think that they're going to have to get ready because you're going to see a lot of deep passes because um, a lot of the plays 
that uh you know teams make on the same secondary they always end up working in in their favor because it's going to be a pass interference it's going to be a holding call or it's going to be a big play so they got to get ready um Dalton says what do you think about trading for Ramsey um I think uh trading for Ramsey would be a good thing I think that Jalen Ramsey is the best cornerback in football in my opinion uh I think that he's tough. I think that uh, what's going on in Jacksonville uh, is not a reflection of him. Uh, despite, I mean, no matter what the media is saying about him, I think that Jalen Ramsey is a guy that wants to win. Um, but I, I do say this, um, Jalen Ramsey is up uh, for a big, huge contract. And if the Saints were to trade for him, I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to just use him for one year and let him go into free agency? Or are you going to sign him to a long-term deal? Uh, you got to ask yourself, I mean, is that a smart decision to make, especially when you got to pay guys like Lattimore, like Ramchick, like Alvin Kamara. Guys like that got to get paid. So that'll be another guy on your books that's demanding high value. So, I mean, high value dollars. So um, I would love to see him on the team, but, I mean, you got to understand that his contract is going to be up and the New Orleans Saints are going to have to pay this guy and they're going to have to pay him one of the highest paid cornerbacks, if not the highest paid cornerback uh, contract in NFL history. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it at the end of the day? Uh, let me see. Do you think they should put Hill in Bridgewater spot? Or do you think that Bridgewater knows what he needs to do to carry the team? Um, I think, I think it's like this, Matthew. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think you need to use both of these guys. I think that uh, you have to be real smart about this because uh, you you want to kind of uh, dial back what you have for the Taysom Hill package um, because you might need him in the game. I do think they, they need to use both of these guys at the quarterback position. I think you need to come up with some plays for Taysom Hill inside of the game that plays that teams are not going to be ready for. I think uh, teams uh, kind of know that Taysom Hill, when he's in the game, is probably going to be a RPO, which stands for run pass option. Um, you know, they probably know that he's not going to throw the ball that much. So I think the Saints need to uh, come up with some passing play for Taysom Hill uh, in, in games now, you know, because now teams will have to respect the fact that he could possibly do a RPO or he can possibly go back and throw the ball down the field 45 yards. So, I think they need to use both of them in this game. But I do think we need to understand uh, what we got in Teddy Bridgewater. Is he going to be that guy that when Drew Brees retired, you know, could possibly be the next starter for the Saints? Or do we need to go into the draft? Or, need, or do we need to go with Taysom Hill? Look, I said it on the podcast. I've said it on videos. You know, I'm going to ride with Teddy Bridgewater. But if he's not playing up to snuff, if he goes out there and he's been working with the first team and he's not doing what – he needs to be doing, then I think you need to put in Taysom Hill. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about wins, okay? It's not about loyalty at the end of the day. It's not about, oh, I got this guy. We signed him. We we owe it to him. No. If the guy's not producing on the field, it's time for you to go with someone else. So that's what I think. Uh, Zane says, what do you think about bringing back Delvin Bro? Um, I'm not a Delvin Bro fan. I'm sorry. Like, he had a couple games with the New Orleans Saints. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I can think about when he played against the Atlanta Falcons. He had a good game against Julio Jones. Uh, and I think he may have had a couple games. But Delvin Bro, for the most part, you know, I mean, he was one of those guys that always got a holding call penalty called on him. I can never forget about the time where he uh, he got lost in the lights. He didn't know where the ball was at. He looking all up at the sun. I mean, at, at the lights and stuff like that, getting getting posterized. I mean, I, I understand Delvin Bro. You know, I love his story. I know he's an LSU product. Shouts out to McDonald 35 High School. But at the end of the day, um, I, I really, I, I just never really been a fan of Delvin Bro. You know, I mean, he always was hurt. Um, he can never stay in the lineup. Uh, so I think when you dealing with guys like that, that's constantly injured, I, I don't think it's a good move. I mean. I just never really just been sold on him. It's not like he was one of those guys when he was on the field was locking dudes down week after week. Um, you know, I can think about some games he was really good and some games he wasn't. He was very inconsistent. So uh, what are we going to do at receiver or with Kirkwood on IR? Emmanuel Butler coming up. 
yeah, I think they're going to go ahead and go with Emmanuel Butler or Lil Jordan Humphreys in this game. Um, I think you're probably going to see these guys play. Um, I think when when they do go out there, I think they need to produce. Um, Emmanuel Butler has a lot of upside, but sometimes it seems to me uh, the, the lights get a little bit too bright for him. I don't know if he's nervous. I mean, it comes with the territory, right? I mean, you, you're a rookie. I mean, you've been thinking about playing in the NFL. You finally get your chance, but you got to go out there and produce. I mean, these the first two preseason games, uh, it, it should have just basically shook the nerves off, okay? I know there's a level of nerves every game that you play, but you got to go out there and show everybody what you have. And I think if Emmanuel Butler shakes off that those nerves, I think he will uh, be uh, very good. I think he has the potential of being that number two receiver because – um, a lot of people in the Saints organization are really high on Butler, so I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna uh, get activated uh, probably later on this week. I think he's gonna be in a rotation. So, uh, what's going to happen with linebackers uh, at linebacker with Alex Azzalone on IR? Well, um, you know, thankfully they went out there and got Kiko Alonso. I mean, this is third full week with the team, so. I think you're going to see Kiko Alonso uh, stepping up. Um, I think you're also uh, going to see uh, Carl Granderson. Now, I know you probably don't know that much about Carl Granderson, but he was the guy who came out of the University of Wyoming. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, he, was he was supposed to serve a six-month sentence for sexual assault, you know, when he was in college. But, um, uh, you know, he ended up uh, getting reduced to a year probation, so that allowed him to... Uh, be back with the team. He was on a commissioner's exempt list. Um, with that commissioner exempt list, it gave the Saints a couple weeks for Carl Grandison to go out there and practice and stuff like that in order for the Saints to decide if they wanted to keep him or not. So I guess he did enough for him to be a part of the Saints uh, organization and being a part of the team. He's a part of the 53 man roster. You're probably going to see him probably on um, special teams and you'll probably see him sprinkled. Uh, into the game as well but don't forget that we also have uh, Craig Robinson I mean I know a lot of people don't really talk about Craig Robinson but Craig Robinson is one of those guys that I like I got a lot of respect for he's mostly on special teams he's a special teams captain but when he's in the game man he always uh, lays it all out there man he's not the fastest guy he's not the strongest guy but he plays with a lot of heart and a lot of determination and I think that Craig Robinson Kiko Alonso and also Carl Granderson, I think they are going to be able to step up for Azzalone. It's sad, though, you know, because I, I like Azzalone, but um, it seems like his college issues are, uh, are becoming his uh, professional issues, and that's the, the fact that he can't stay healthy. And uh, you got to stay healthy in order for you to be on the field. I mean, to me, I hate to say it, but he's starting to be like the New Orleans Saints version of Sean Lee. I mean, when he's in a game, he makes plays, but – you rarely ever see him because he's on the sideline hurt. Uh, David says, uh, do you think we need to call Dez Bryant? I mean, it wouldn't hurt to call Dez. Um, I think that Dez Bryant is hungry. I think that Dez Bryant would be a, a, a great addition to the New Orleans Saints. I think the New Orleans Saints offense would be uh, very, uh, very friendly uh, to a Dez Bryant because we all know that Sean Payton is going to put Dez Bryant in positions to, uh, to succeed. Uh, Dez Bryant didn't like the way that he left Dallas. Um, he didn't like the way, uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys just basically wrote him off and how the NFL just saw him as damaged goods. And, of course, two days into him being signed by the Saints, uh, he tore his Achilles. So I think that you might want to call Dez Bryant, uh, you know, and if you have not already, you know, just keep, keep his number close by because I, I think that – the New Orleans Saints might need him down the stretch, especially if guys like Lil Jordan Humphreys and Emmanuel Butler are not uh, going out there and producing the way that they should. Uh, Kurt says, uh, Teddy will have to get it together regardless. Taysom is the, the turning point for receiving Wildcat options, punt returns, and special teams. He is the reason we call him the Swiss Army Knife, okay? What do you think? Well, Kirk, thank you very much. I, I agree with you, uh, but I will say this. You're probably going to see uh, Taysom Hill's roles reduced uh, because of the fact that he is a backup quarterback. You'll probably see him on special teams, but I think you're not going to see him as 
as much in the game as, as you once did um, doing all these, uh, you know, playing a tight end position, playing fullback. You're not going to see that, man, because the Saints know if, I mean, one play can end up injuring him and then the next thing you know, you're going with a JT Barrett or something like that. They know the importance of Taysom Hill and Taysom Hill is a quarterback. I think you're going to see more quarterback plays by Taysom Hill. I think you're going to see more RPOs, and you're going to see some passes uh, by Taysom Hill that teams are not prepared for. So I agree with you, um, but I think they're going to reduce his role in some of those uh, positions that he's been playing on the field on the offense. Uh, Chris Banjo coming back, perhaps. I know Cam Jordan and some people were really upset about him leaving. Yeah, um, Chris Banjo, I mean, I, that was a shock to me. Uh, Chris Banjo is one of those special teams ace. I mean, he's always been good every way he went. Um, he was really good with the Green Bay Packers on special teams, and he really was good with the Saints on special teams. Uh, I, I would say never say never. Um, the fact that he hasn't been signed yet is, a, is, is great. I think that the New Orleans Saints are probably going to end up uh, signing him if he doesn't sign with anyone else. But it's probably going to be if someone's on special teams get hurt. Uh, they might even sign him because they may not use uh, Taysom Hill as much on special teams as they once did. So you never know. Uh, Blake says, I see Teddy with three touchdowns Sunday. Man, I hope you're right, Blake. I, I really do. I hope you're right. But um, I don't know, man. You know, I, I look at it more like it's going to be one of those muddy, dirty games. You know, I think it's going to be one of those games where you run the football, milk the clock, uh, throw a few plays down the field, and, uh, you know, let's get the heck out of here with a field goal win or a touchdown win. You know, like, we, we got to uh, be smart about this, man. I mean, we can't go out here and just think that, uh, you know, Teddy Bridgewater is, is, is Patrick Mahomes or something like that, throwing the ball four and five times. That, that's just not his game. You know, I've never seen Teddy Bridgewater just go out there throwing the ball all over the place. I mean, he he is – more like a Drew Brees than you think. No, he's not as accurate as Drew Brees. No, his decision-making, his timing is not the same as Drew Brees. But I'm talking about the, the you know, the fact that, uh, you know, going out there, you know, throwing a football on time is, is more like a, a Teddy Bridgewater type thing. He's not a guy that you'll want to put in a, a, a you know, a seven-step drop and stuff like that and throw the ball and bombs away like, like a, a – you know, Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers or nothing like that. I mean, he's more like a guy, you know, um, you know, it's all about timing. You know, throw the ball before the receiver turn around. Uh, you know, as soon as he in his cut, throw the ball. That's more like Teddy Bridgewater, you know. But that's what I feel like the Saints need to do this Sunday. I feel like they need to get away from those five and those seven-step drops with Teddy Bridgewater. I think it needs to be something quick. Um, I think they need to play Teddy Bridgewater the same way you know, the New England Patriots play Tom Brady. You don't see Tom Brady with too many five- and seven-step drops, do you? You don't see it. You see mostly like it's like three, you know, three-step drops, quick slants over the middle, um, you know, nothing too major. I think that's what you need to see in Teddy Bridgewater. I think if the Saints roll like that and they bring their running game with them and the offensive line don't play like they did last week, I think we'll be all right. Um, is next season Breeze last season? Um, you know, honestly, I thought this season was going to be Drew Brees' last season, to be honest with you. Um, I thought that Drew Brees probably thought that this was the year that was going to really make a, a run at it. Of course, last year, you know, I felt like if they would have won the Super Bowl, uh, I think he would have uh, went off into the sunset. That's just my honest opinion about this. Um, I think that with the combination of the possibility of Teddy Bridgewater, uh, could have been playing for Miami, which is seems like the smartest decision in the world right now. But he could have been a starting quarterback for Miami. Um, it, it, when you think about the fact that he could have been a starter, but he decided to come back and be a backup, uh, that shows you right there that the conversation was had. I feel like a conversation was had that we as fans would never know. But I feel like uh, Sean Payton probably talked to Drew and probably seeing where Drew Head was at. Probably ask him, like, how many years you think you got left, man? You know, do you think that you got one more year, two more years? Because I don't feel like if Drew would have said, man, I feel like I can play a couple, about three or four more years, I think they would have went out there and got Teddy Bridgewater. I don't think that would have happened. But I'm glad that they got Teddy Bridgewater because, um, you know, com compared to some of these other backups in the league, I think you, you probably have one of the best backups in the Teddy Bridgewater. 
I know uh, some people in the Who That Nation don't believe that just yet. But, I mean, you look at some of these guys. I mean, look at the New York Jets. I mean, look look at some of these other teams out here that's, uh, you know, looking for a quarterback. You know, like Jacksonville Jaguars, even though, you know, uh, Minshew, I think he did a pretty good job with Jacksonville. Um, and when uh, Nick Foles went down, I think he completed like his first 12 passes or something like that. But none of that generated into no touchdown. So, I mean, just look around the league and it'll show you, man, a, a good quality backup quarterback is hard to come by. Uh, and also, you know, Big Ben is out for the season. So they're going with Mason Rudolph. And um, he had a pretty good game, man. But, I mean, nothing to hoop and holler about. So we'll see. I'm interested to see what the Saints are going to do uh, this Sunday. But podcasts and, and news will be coming up throughout the week um, about the Seattle Seahawks New Orleans Saints game. If there are any injuries or signings, I will gladly let you know. This has been the lunchtime edition of the State of the Saints podcast. You can check out the State of the Saints podcast on YouTube, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints uh, podcast. Subscribe to the channel and also uh, State of the Saints podcast live. Uh, will be coming up, I will have to say, probably tomorrow. Um, tonight, I'll be doing a show called the NFC South versus the NFL podcast uh, with two of my, my good friends, the uh, Carolina Panther fan, uh, Mike Ricks, and also uh, DJ Hopkins, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. I am the representative of the New Orleans Saints. So y'all check that out, man, and follow the Facebook page, NFC South versus the NFL. Um, I really love doing the show. Um, I really like uh, talking about the Saints and the NFC South. So I, if you're a fan of the NFL, if you're a fan of the NFC South, if you like to talk trash, that's the show for you. <laughs> and trust and believe, you know, I'm representing the Who That Nation and we talking a lot of trash about them Falcons. <laughs> but until next time, all I have to say is, Who That?